Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be going over the new GM notes that have recently been added to Dungeon Fog. To access your GM notes you simply go into the map that you want to add your notes to and in the top left hand side you select the GM notes tab. Now before I go there, there are a few things to bear in mind. The more information you've put into your original map, the easier your GM notes experience will be. That's not saying that you have to put notes or information into your map, but it is advisable. And by notes I mean adding in room details, for example, room numbers, room descriptions, and even if you wanted to, adding in some GM notes down in the actual map itself. That will help you in GM notes. Let's jump into GM Notes now, and here we go. First thing that pops up on our screen is the template that we can choose to start with when we are creating our GM Notes. There are various types of templates, custom templates, simple templates, and empty templates. These will draw in certain amounts of information from your existing map already. What I'm going to do is start with an empty template so that I can show you every step that you need to take when creating your GM Notes. Once I've selected that, I then need to choose my size of uh, my document. And I can choose either American sizes, letter, ledger, and so on, or I can choose international sizes such as the A4, A5, depending. Now, this is really useful if you are going to be printing out your notes and using them later on. I default to the A4, and all I do is select that by left clicking on it, and then I click Create Notes. Now, I have a completely blank canvas. There are three areas that we need to pay particular attention to before we jump into things. There is the structure area. This will be the actual structure of our document and you'll see as we add things to our document it's going to populate out a structure tree very similar to the layer system within the editor itself. Then we have our document options that allows us to export, to update, change things, to format things and to view different things. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Underneath we have all our text editing options. This is standard text editor stuff. So if you've used Google Documents or Word in the last hundred years, you will know exactly how to use this text option here. And then finally, we have the right hand box, which is where you're going to be spending the majority of your time in terms of determining the layout of your document. We have multiple options, text boxes, map elements, images, world anvil linking, as well as fifth edition stat blocks and the OGL that you would need if you want to use any of your D&D stuff and you want to publish it and you need the OGL. It's a nice little touch from the designers. Finally, we have the layout and that's a divider and then the different sections. The most important thing to bear in mind when you are working with GM Notes is that you need to create holding spaces before you can start doing anything. If I just click on the page and try and type, nothing will happen. There is no holder for the text to fit into. So if you think of every single piece of text on your page as perhaps a prop that you will be adding, you effectively need to design the rooms into which those props will go. So that requires us to work with our layout. Now if I were to add a single section, if I simply left click on my page to activate it, and then I left click once on the section box, I will get a single section. Now again, if I start to type in the space, nothing will happen. And the reason for that is it is just a space. It is a large empty room. I still need to add a text prop there or a box prop or a map element prop or um, image prop. You get the idea. Now if I select somewhere else on my page, anywhere else outside of that first box, and I click on two sections, I get two sections. Again, they are empty. These cells contain nothing. I need to add something into them. And then finally, if I click on three sections, it creates three sections. It's not rocket science, folks. Now, let's add in some actual information. So, if I click on the cell and I left click once on text, it will now create a text box. Now, if I left click in the text box, I can now type, hello world. I can then continue to type. That's as simple as it gets in terms of adding text. Now, this is where the editor becomes particularly remarkable. Let's say, for example, that we don't want the text to be in this box here, but we want it to be in this box or cell, or we want it to be in that cell. All we need to do is simply left click on the cross sign, the movement sign, and drag it where we want it to be. Notice the green line indicates where that text is going to get dropped. So if I let go of left click now, the text will be dropped into this box. 
it will automatically format the text to try and fit the space that you are dropping it into or it will realign the space to fit the text that you are dropping in. So if for example I then go you can see how the cells are expanding to fit the text. And again, if I left click on the cross and drag the text into a different cell, it will expand that cell to fit and contract the original cell. So once again, select the cell, left click the cell to select it, then single click on whatever it is that you want to add. So adding text is relatively straightforward. Let's add in a map element. Now the map element is going to draw from the map that your editor has active and will be linked to that particular map for all eternity. Well, that's not entirely true. Watch the advanced tutorial on GM Notes to find out why. I can select any part of the map, so I could select the entire map, I could select the room group that I have created called house, or I could select the individual rooms. So if I select the hallway, for example, I can also select to include a summary. Now that summary will be pulling information such as the notes that you may have already embedded into that room in the editor, or it will pull across information that Dungeon Fog automatically generates. Let me show you. So I click on save. It will now import that image and there it is. I now have all of the information that I could possibly want that goes along with this particular map space. Now if I move this out of that space and left click and drag it and there we go it now resizes it to fit it in there. Again I can move and move it down to there and there we go it fits into that space. Let's move it up to this space, however, as it gives us some better options. Notice we have some additional symbols here, and the ones that we are particularly interested in is Duplicate. That will simply copy the room, and it will be exactly what the previous cell was. We don't want that. We're going to click on the trash can to get rid of it. So there we go. It's gone. Again, left-clicking on the map element. We can then move it up. We can then also refresh it so what that means is if we go into the map editor itself and I'll just load up the map editor and we add in a new prop and I'm going to drop in the first prop that I find so here's a suit of armor which we are now going to just quickly add into the map here I now add in that piece of armor I go back to the GM notes and as it loads up You'll see the original map is still there. If I select that map section and I hit the update, it will now update with the new armor in place. It's a really powerful tool if you're developing your notes and you realize you need to add something in or if something changes during your game and you need to go back and update it. When it comes to stat blocks, that's fairly straightforward. I'm going to select this cell and I'm going to say stat block. And you can see there it automatically adds in a stat block. Now this is the preset stat block that comes with Dungeon Fog. You can then go in and edit it to your heart's content, changing all of the values as you so need, as well as deleting things. Now when you delete things, you just click on the little trash can and it gets rid of it straight away. So let's get rid of its frightful presence. I don't think the mother of all rats needs that. And notice that it automatically reformats everything to fit back onto our page. Now it will not shrink this down any further than it already is until we change the parameters of certain things. So let's get rid of its breath attack as well. It doesn't need that. And we're slowly starting to get it to fit there. Now if we need an additional page, let me get rid of the stat block. It is getting in the way. If we need an additional page, I simply click on the additional page option and that will add another page for me to carry on working in. Note it will not carry text over from one page to another because it needs to have its own holding space. It needs to have its own room. So bear that in mind for the time being. Now, if we have created a double cell like this, we realize that we actually want it to be a single cell. All we do is select the cell and delete it, and now we have a single space. Remember, it will always auto-expand cells to fit the page. If you notice, I have multiple layers here of things. I have the row, I have the cell, and then I have the text. The holding space, basically, and the room within that holding space, and then the prop within that room, as far as this tutorial's nomenclature is concerned. I can drag any one of these around it doesn't matter which one I grab and so if I grab this I can move it to the top of my stack if I grab just the text box I can move that out of that holding cell and down into this one down here it's all very straightforward and all very very simple finally if I want to add an image to my document I simply select where I want to add the image 
then I click on image and it will automatically open up this blank image. Now what it's asking for me to do now is to double click on the image and that will then open up all of the different options that I have already preloaded or which I can load from my PC. I could select a pre-existing image which it will automatically add and automatically size. So there is an image of the hunter who lives in the cabin that I have designed. Again, notice that our boxes have fallen off here. So if I don't want that to happen, I grab the entire holding space, grab that crosshair and just drag it down onto the next page. And there we go. It now fits nicely and maintains all of the formatting that we wanted. Now all that you need to do is once you've made everything look pretty by selecting various pieces of text, Let's just grab this one here, for example, and I can change the font size as usual. All the standard text operations that I want are available here, as well as thousands and thousands of fonts courtesy of Dungeon Fog. Once I'm happy with all of that, I then go to Document and I go Export. And it will open it up as either an exportable PDF, which is what I would most likely use, or I could just simply send it to my printer and print it out. It will always be saved with the map, so once I hit on the exit button, it will take me out to my standard Dungeon Fog interface. And now notice a new feature as well. We now have the notes section has been added. So we can see that this map not only is version five, but it now has the notes as well. And if I were to left click on the notes, it will automatically open the battle map editor on the GM notes section. And there we are straight back into the GM notes. And of course I still have access to the original map. And that is a very brief introduction to how GM Notes works. A further advanced tutorial will look at formatting, opacity elements, and more to make even more of your GM Notes.